And I'm really excited to talk to you all about frogs and toads. They're really one of my favorite animals, so I love talking about them. Um, they have a really amazing history or life history and metamorphosis, which we'll talk about. And there are a group of amphibians that are 200 million years old. So as a group, that's all, that's really old, isn't it? So amphibians are cold-blooded. They have scaleless and thin skin, and their life cycle begins in the water as a larval stage. And that's really just a fancy word for they start out as eggs in the water. And most amphibians will spend part of their life either near the water or in the water. And that's why they get the name amphibians because um, coming in or out of the water, uh, the word amphibious, and that's what it means. And then other types of amphibians are frogs, toads, salamanders, and newts. Today, we're gonna talk mostly about frogs and toads that we can find in our area, but there are different types that live all around the world. And here um, on Long Island too, we can find salamanders, but um, they're a little bit more rare to see. Um, amphibians have special skin glands. So on their bodies, if we look at the pictures on this slide, you can see that they don't have this tough skin that reptiles have, right? Reptiles have scales if we think of a lizard. But amphibians have this really cool skin that um, that sometimes takes in water. It also, they have these skin glands that can produce useful proteins or even can be toxic to other animals. So maybe other animals wouldn't want to, to eat a frog or a toad because they have these not, they don't taste very good to other animals. So that's really good protection from predators. Um, so I wanted to show you, though, before we move on, this really cool animal at the bottom of the screen. It's called a chysillian. It looks like a snake or a worm, but it's actually a type of amphibian. Um, we don't have these in our area, but they are a type of amphibian, just like frogs and toads. And these are some amphibians in New York State that are endangered. So the word endangered just means that it's an animal that there's not as many of them left in the wild. And that could be because there might be more people or houses built on their habitat. But there is the one at the very top of the screen, if you can see that um, eastern tiger salamander. That's a salamander that's actually pretty big. It's around maybe um, six inches to 12 inches is long and they're endangered in New York State, which means that there's not as many of them left. Amphibians are really vulnerable or they're very susceptible to their environment. So because they have skin, just like us, that soaks up water or it might soak in chemicals, if there's a habitat that might have those things in it or, or maybe some toxins, that can hurt these, these types of animals. So if you see a lot of amphibians, that's usually a really good sign that the habitat is healthy. But if you don't see a lot of amphibians, it could mean that there's some pollution. If we look on our list of amphibians in New York State, though, there's some animals, there's lots of salamanders here. There's a really cool type of amphibian called a mud puppy. Has anyone heard of that animal before? A mud puppy? Isn't that cool? So it's, it's an amphibian. It's not actually a puppy, but um, it is an animal that likes to live in water or in mud. And then we have lots of different frogs to learn about, frogs and toads. We're going to talk about the ones that, of course, that we see in our area, but there are different frogs that live upstate New York in the mountains. So the western chorus frog, um, the mink frog, those are ones that aren't in our area, but you can find maybe if you go upstate, if you go camping. And on this slide, I wanted to show you just some amazing adaptations of frogs and toads. So they all look very different. I wanted to first start with the biggest frog in the world, and that is the African bullfrog. Do you see how someone's holding on to that frog, right? It's a bigger than their hands. It's about this big, and that's the biggest frog in the world. 
The smallest frog in the world is just a little bit to the left, and you can see that it's the size of a dime, so it's really small. Um, that's the smallest frog compared to the largest frog. So the gold frog is even smaller than a person's fingernail. So if you look at your fingernail, that, toe, that frog is about as big as our fingernails, the size of a dime, so pretty amazing. And frogs are found all over the world. And if we go a bit lower on this screen, we can see the Vietnamese mossy frog. That frog I included because it is so camouflaged. So I think its body looks just like moss. What do you guys think? Does it look a little bit like moss? It does, right? And that will help protect that frog from predators. So if it camouflages, it blends in with all of these, its surroundings. And then another cool one that I thought looked just like a leaf is in the middle. That's the Malayan horned frog. Um, that one has, I think, really good camouflage as well, just is supposed to look like a different area. So um, that one to me looks pretty cool. It even has some eyebrows. <laughs> and then the desert rain frog, that guy is, I think the cutest frog in the world. He has this little tiny mouth and these big eyes. And those, even though it makes, maybe to us, it looks very cute. Um, there's a reason why he has these big eyes and the small little mouth because they only come out when it rains and they'll eat small bugs. So they might not need a big mouth like some of the, our other frogs. And then um, on the very bottom, we have the golden poison dart frog, and it is very toxic. And that just means that it has, it will, if something touched it, it would not be very good to touch this frog, right? It's very toxic. Um, it lives very far away from us, though, so we don't have to worry about seeing this frog, but um, it has great protection, and it can even poison bigger animals. So these are just some amazing adaptations of frogs all over the world. There is one place that frogs aren't found, and that's Antarctica. And in Antarctica, there's penguins, leopard seals, but no frogs because it's just too cold for them. But there are around 7,000 species of frogs worldwide. And there are always new species of frogs being found every year. So if you love frogs and someone that studies frogs is called a herpetologist. Can you guys say that at home? A herpetologist? <laughs> so if you love frogs and you want to study frogs and, and reptiles, that's what it's called. So the differences between frogs and toads, right? They are in the same family, but um, toads are, are described as frogs that have very bumpy skin. The toads are usually much drier and they have a ridge over their eye. Um, toads have no teeth and they usually have these feet. If you notice in the, the drawing too, their feet are really good at digging but they're not as good at swimming. So most of these animals, frogs and toads, can live between five to 10 years old. Some can live up to 30 years old, um, but they, the toads also have these poisonous fluids that come out of their skin, and that's what makes them so bumpy. But poisonous skin is really good protection from snakes, from other animals that might wanna eat a toad. And then if we look at a frog, which is on the left-hand side, usually when you see a frog, they have these bulgy eyes, they have smoother skin, they have tiny little teeth, we can't really see them, but they are usually um, thinner or skinnier than toads and they're, they have very long legs for jumping. So these are some differences between frogs and toads. And on frogs and toads, we, there are some things that you can look for, right? Just like us, frogs have eyes. Um, they have a mouth, they have a nose. Their ears look a bit different though. So a frog's ear is just this circle behind their eye and it's called a tympanum. 
And a tympanum is basically, it's like an eardrum. On the inside, they have an ear, but on the outside, they have really good protection from water. So if you guys cover up your ears at home and still try to listen to my voice, you can probably still hear my voice, even if you do cover up your ears, right? You can still hear my voice, but it's a little more muffled, right? You can't hear it as well. And that's what a frog can hear. But that that is like wearing in um, it's something to protect their ears, right? So it keeps dirt, it keeps mud and water out of their ear. And then, of course, they have front legs and back legs. Sometimes you'll see frogs have webbed feet to help them swim. And their eyes can see in most directions. So if we sit still and we look around us without moving our neck, right, if we just look forward, we can usually just see in front of us. But a frog, if they're sitting still, they might be able to see a bit behind them and in front of them, which is great because they might want to escape from, of course, predators. So the life cycle of a frog is really special. And this is what makes them amphibians. All amphibians, salamanders, toads, newts, they start their life out in the water and their, their parents will lay eggs. So we're looking right now at these tiny little eggs that will grow to be bigger. Eventually a tadpole will hatch out of the egg and tadpoles still have to live in the water. So what they're doing is they're swimming around and they're eating and they're getting bigger and bigger. Usually they're eating plants, they're eating small bugs, but um, either way, they're growing a lot. They'll start to grow back legs. They'll lose their tail. Um, and at this stage, they're called froglets. So if you see a frog that has a tail, it's called a froglet. And then they'll lose their tail completely, and then they'll be an adult. So this word, um, this life cycle is called a metamorphosis. Can you guys say that three times fast at home? A metamorphosis, right? That's a big word that just means that they look very different from the way they started. So an adult frog looks nothing like how they hatch out of their egg as a tadpole. And reptiles like snakes, the reason why they're different is because when reptiles are born, they hatch out of an, out of an egg, but they look like their adult form just in a little baby version. So these guys can grow, um, they'll grow gills, right? They have gills when they're breathing water um, as a tadpole, and then they'll eventually grow to be air breathing and they'll go out onto land a lot of times. So now we're gonna start talking about some of the frogs that we have in our area, so on Long Island. And the Quag Wildlife Refuge, which is where I am today, is a great place to visit frogs and look for frogs here, sometimes around our pond, which looks just like the mural in the background here. But we've seen all different types of frogs here at the wildlife refuge. And because it is a wildlife refuge, that means that it's protected for wildlife. So we don't allow people to go fishing or hunting. We just want people to come and enjoy nature. And you can come and visit the wildlife refuge any day of the year. But bullfrogs, like the one in the, the picture here, they are our biggest frog that we have in our area. Does anyone want to take a guess how heavy a bullfrog might grow to be? So in our group chat, you can um, open it up and you can type in a number. How heavy do you think bullfrogs will grow? And if maybe even if your video is on, you can hold up a number too. So bullfrogs, they are our biggest frogs. And they can be about the size of your hand when they get full grown. And maybe I'll just give it, maybe I'll wait until the very end to, oh, maybe five pounds, seven pounds. Great guess. So those are good guesses. Um, bullfrogs actually grow to be around two pounds, but they are really big. So even though they might be a little bit less um, heavy than we thought, but they are our biggest frog. So um, when you look for a bullfrog, you can look for 
a large frog. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of brown on their back, but mostly green faces. They have um, a very chunky body. They have these big webbed feet that help them swim. So if you notice, they are good swimmers. They like to live around water. So you might want to check around fresh water to find a bullfrog. And check out how big that tadpole is. Can you guys see that tadpole? He's huge, right? It's, um, that's in someone's hand. So the tadpoles can grow pretty big as well. And these these to um, frogs will eat, they'll eat other frogs, bugs, they can eat basically anything they find. Sometimes bullfrogs will even try to eat birds. So they have these big mouths that they'll use, they'll sit very still, and then they'll stick out their tongue and try to eat whatever comes in front of them. But I have a, I have a question. Can um, bullfrogs eat humans or not? Good question. So bullfrogs cannot eat humans. Um, they are much too small. And all of these frogs and toads can't hurt humans. They're actually great to have around because they're looking for mosquitoes or other bugs that we might not like. So they're great to have around, but they can't hurt people. The great question. So another great way to find frogs is by using your ears and listening. So I'm going to play the sound of a bullfrog. It sounds supposed to sound like rum, rum, or jug of rum. So let's listen to their call. And I'm playing all of the noises from, it's called the Lang Elliott Music of Nature. All right, so that's a that's a really big call to listen for at night uh, or at, during the daytime, but sometimes they'll start to call right when the sun goes down. Um, but I did want to show you all one really cool thing before we move on from bullfrogs is that remember how we were talking about their eardrum or their tympanum? So if you look at that circle behind the eye, you can actually tell if it's a boy or a girl by comparing their ear to their eye. So if we see a frog that has a bigger eye than its ear, it's a boy. And if you see a frog that has a smaller ear and a bigger eye, um, that's a girl. So, oh, I'm sorry, did I, uh, so the eye is smaller than the eardrum on a female. The eye is larger than the eardrum on a male. So that's a really cool way if you do see a frog to, to kind of tell if it's a boy or a girl. So what do you guys think in this picture? Do you think the eye is bigger or the eye or the eardrum is bigger? What do you think? And you can type it in the chat too if, if, you're, if you're able to. <laughs> so to me, it looks like the ear is bigger than the eye right? And if the ear is bigger, that means it's a girl. So this is a girl. So pretty amazing. So great job. I saw someone guess the same thing. Another frog that looks very similar to the bullfrog is a green frog. So they look almost exactly alike, except um, the green frog is smaller than the bullfrog. Um, so the green frog has the same beautiful kind of mossy green on the front of its face. It has the brown on the back of its body, but this frog has a different sound, which I'll play in just a little bit. But the green frog also has a ridge. If you can see my mouse, right? The, this ridge of skin that runs behind the eye all the way down its body that makes it different than the bullfrog too. 
So bullfrogs don't have the side ridges, and that's one way to tell. Um, so these guys can grow to be around three and a half inches big. So they're a bit smaller than the, the bullfrogs, but um, they are often found on the edges of small ponds. We see them a lot here at the refuge. And uh, these guys, when they do lay eggs, and we can see there's a photo of a tadpole at the bottom, but when they do lay eggs, they can lay up to 3,000 eggs in a clump of water um, or in a clump on the surface of a water. And they'll eat snails, worms. And one thing I also wanted to point out is when we look at this little tiny map at the bottom of the screen, that's a map of New York State. And if you see those all of the all of New York State is yellow in this picture. This is called a range map. So that's a good way to tell us where green frogs live. If you see yellow, then that's where a green frog lives. And I have more maps to show us too where the other frogs live. But a green frog sounds very different. It's supposed to sound like a loose banjo string. Does anyone know what that sounds like? Not really, right? A loose banjo string or a snapping rubber band. So let's listen to this guy. So I think this sounds pretty different than the bullfrog. It's a good way to identify what frogs might be around. Um, this is a frog that is very hard to see, but very easy to hear. So spring peepers, that's the name of this very tiny tree frog that lives all across the East Coast of the United States and on Long Island. It's the size of a paper clip. So it is really small. And you can see that on the person's finger, the person holding the frog, it's super tiny. It's about the size of maybe your thumbnail. But they make a very big noise at night. Um, they're very well camouflaged. You can see that they would blend right into the areas that they live. And they come out at night. So the word for a nighttime animal is called nocturnal. So these spring peepers are nocturnal. They'll come out at usually in the middle of March and they'll start singing. And the ones that are singing are the boys. So usually it's only boy frogs that sing and they're trying to gather all of the girls together. And they will hibernate under logs, under tree bark, but they're one of the first frogs to come out in the springtime. So some of you might have even heard them already. I've heard them here at the refuge and they are super, super loud. Um, I wanted to also show you guys, if you ever see a very tiny frog with an X on its back, that's a spring peeper. So um, you can, can't really see it in this photo, but it is on the top there. You can see that dark brown X is a really good way to tell that you have a spring peeper. So the reason why they're called peepers is because their noise sounds like a peep. sounds like a bird. It totally does, right? It sounds just like a bird. A lot of people do think that they are birds. Has anyone heard that before? Maybe, right? And it's oh. no, not not yet. But if you listen for them at night um, or right when the sun goes down, that is what they sound like. And do you guys see this big voice pouch here? Like the, the male has this 
huge. It looks like a balloon. And that is really good at making the noise travel farther so that people, people can hear it, other frogs can hear it too. And then another of my favorite um, tree frogs is the gray tree frog. They have a beautiful sound that I'll play on our next slide, but they live up in the trees. So like other tree frogs, they have on the edges of their feet, they have these toe pads that help them climb. And they have a, a squeaky chirp. Again, the males are the ones that are calling and they have some bumpy skin that kind of makes them look like a toad, but you can tell that they're a frog because they have, of course, the toe pads that help them climb and um, these big eyes without the ridge over their eye. Something that's kind of cool about the gray tree frog is that on the inside of their legs, they have this bright yellow that if they were hopping away, the, uh, another animal would see the bright yellow and get confused. So it's supposed to be a defense for the gray tree frog. So it sounds like a cheap, um, that's what it's supposed to sound like. I'll play it right now. So that's a, a really cool noise also to listen for at night because gray tree frogs will call at night. And a great spot to look for frogs is near water because they'll be laying their eggs at, in a pond or even a puddle. If you have a swimming pool, sometimes frogs will try to lay their eggs in swimming pools too. And one year at the refuge, there was um, a pool in an area near us that um, a pool company was cleaning out, but there were thousands of tadpoles in the pool because it hadn't been open for a few years and um, it had the water hadn't been treated. So they brought us all of the tadpoles in this big bucket. We kept them in a tank and eventually they hatched. They turned into these, of course, tiny little frogs and they were all gray tree frogs. So there was thousands of them. It was really cool. It was pretty amazing. And then we, we did release them here at the refuge. So this is actually a toad. So the Eastern Spadefoot toad. It's called that because it its foot is supposed to look like a spade, um, which is, is usually the shape for the, kind of like a triangular shape. But um, the Spadefoot toad is, I think, really beautiful. It has smoother and moister skin. It has these tiny little spots with warts, right? It has the bumpy skin like all toads have. And its eyes are pretty different than other frogs. If you look at the eyes, it has an elliptical pupil. So instead of a round black spot, it's going up and down, kind of like a cat eye. Um, it spends most of its life buried underground, but when it rains, they'll come out and they'll go into puddles and they can lay thousands of eggs at a time. So one female frog can lay 2,800 eggs. And then the tadpoles will develop pretty quickly and they'll turn into um, a frog within a month. So um, this is kind of a cool picture too, because you can see how when a frog is calling, like the spadefoot frog here, and this one looks to be in a puddle, but when they're calling, they'll throw their head back and their voice pouch will come out and make the sound a lot louder than it would be otherwise. So here we go.
So that one to me sounds like it might have a kind of a stuffy nose, right? It's It sounds a bit um, funny. It sounds like a, a nasal utterance, right? Which is a good description. But in the photo too, you can look at the frog when he's calling and he has um, an eyelid that goes over his eye to protect his eye. It's called a nictitating membrane. So he can see through the eyelid but it protects his eye when he's calling. This is another frog that I have seen at the refuge and it's called the pickerel frog. It is about three inches long, so about this big, right? Pretty small frog that has these dark rectangular spots and ridges on its back. And the pickerel frog, um, it is hard to tell tadpoles apart from other tadpoles, but this one has a tail that kind of extends from its body, so it looks like a big oval. So the pickerel frog sounds like a soft grating snore. So um, I think that's what the spadefoot frog sounded like too, but let's listen to this one. So it does sound like someone snoring maybe out in the forest when you hear a pickerel frog. And um, these, these pickerel frogs, they eat plants as a tadpole, but when they become an adult frog, they eat bugs and other things. So they're herbivores as a tadpole and then carnivores as an adult frog. The wood frog, this one is one that I've never seen, but it because they have excellent camouflage. So they are frogs that hibernate here, of course, on Long Island, and they can actually completely freeze and stop. their heart will stop beating and they'll still survive. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but if you see a frog that you think is a wood frog, it has these little dark spots behind their eye that looks like a raccoon mask and two ridges that run down the side of its body. It's a smaller species that's an inch and a half to three inches large. And <clears throat> it can live much farther north than Long Island. So it can live up in Maine and it stops breathing. Its heart will stop beating when it freezes. And um, that's because in its body, it has the sugar like gluco glucose, it's like antifreeze. So um, it prevents it from completely from ice forming in the cells. So it's able to survive. The ice can freeze between its cells, but not in the cell. Um, so as much as 65% of the water in its body will turn to ice. Amazing. I know that as people, we wouldn't be able to do that. So it's pretty crazy to think that a frog could do that. And I know one of our friends sounded like a frog before, sounded like a bird, right? The spring peepers sounded a little bit like birds, but the wood frogs sound like a chorus of mini ducklings. So we can listen to the wood frog. <laughs> So is that funny? It sounds like a, all of these tiny little ducks quacking, but really it's frogs. And then another toad that we have on Long Island and actually only lives in our area and a little bit above the city, but not much farther, is the Fowler's toad. And this toad looks like all toads are supposed to. So it has the bumpy skin. It has um, these spots per bump, right? You can look and see all of these warts. It has three to seven warts per dark spot. 
So for if you were in a different area, you might want to tell a Fowler's toad from an American toad. But if you see a toad here in, in on Long Island, it's a Fowler's toad. And they, um, they are actually the prey of the hognose snake, which lives in sandy areas. So the hognose snake has fangs that are pretty small, but good for eating toads. So if a toad was to puff up, it didn't want a snake to eat him. The hognose snake actually has these rear facing fangs that will pop the toad. So they are, they have a relationship in an environment where the, the, um, snakes rely on the toads as their food. So toads are great animals because they eat bugs. But of course, in the food chain, they're an important food for other animals too. Um, but toads are one of my favorite animals to see. And even though they're born in water, once they leave the water, they rarely go back except to breed. They like to live in hot areas, in sandy areas. And the, the Fowler's toad sounds like a scream. So are you guys ready to listen to this one? Okay, so I'm gonna pull it up right over here. The Fowler's toad. Whenever I hear that noise at the refuge, it always makes me laugh a little bit. Isn't it a little funny? It sounds like a, a scream, but it's, um, so we hear that sometimes at night here at the refuge. So we know we have some Fowler's toads around. And then this frog is called the Southern Leopard Frog. And I bet you can guess why it's called a leopard. It looks like it has spots just like a leopard does. So the, the southern leopard frog looks to me a lot like the pickerel frog that had the rectangular spots, but these spots are mostly round and there is a small white polka dot in the middle of its ear. So that's a way to tell that you're looking at the southern leopard frog. Um, these frogs will eat insects, bugs that live in the water, so aquatic insects, crayfish, and um, we have them on Long Island. Can you see our range map down at the bottom? And Long Island, we have some yellow here, and especially right out by East Hampton and in Quag, there's some yellow, but they don't live in other places across the state because the northern leopard frog lives there. So, this sound, the nor the um, southern leopard frog sounds like a drawn out rattling snore or a chuckling croak. So let's listen. Isn't that cool? So do you guys think that you could tell a frog from just by listening to it after today? It might be hard and it takes some practice, but maybe we'll do one quick test. I'm going to play the sound of one of the frogs that we learned about, and maybe you can guess which one it was. Are you ready? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to pick one and I'm going to play its sound and I bet you can tell me which one it is. All right, does anyone have any guesses what that frog was? And maybe I'll, I'll give our friends a hint. It was the biggest frog that lives in our area. Does anyone remember? The bullfrog. Great job. Great job. The bullfrog. Exactly. So 
so you guys already know to listen for some frogs. And if anyone wanted to pull up all of the noises that we listened to today, it's on, it's called the Lang Elliott Music of Nature. And this was calls of frogs and toads of the Northeast. But um, I just wanted to thank you all for coming today. And I hope you see lots of good frogs and toads out there this summer.